Hello there. Today, I'd like to share with you three key power words that you can use in your marketing, which I believe from my use of them over the last 20 plus years has enabled me and will enable you to increase your conversion rates, therefore make more sales, help more people and make more money at the same time. Hello there, my name is Peter Thompson. I'm the UK's most prolific information product creator. And over the last 27 years since I sold my business and semi-retired, I've been helping coaches, consultants, speakers and trainers and small business owners, people like me and you, to build for themselves a business and a life of choice, often by showing them how to write, create and market informational products so they can share their knowledge, their experience and their expertise. I was trawling through my various bits of paperwork that I keep, especially stuff about marketing. And I came across an idea of something I'd written about previously. And I thought, oh, you know, it's about time that I resurrected that and shared it again. And so here it is. One day I was walking through the Touchwood Centre in Solihull in the middle of England. And there there's a coffee shop called Joe and the Juice. I thought I'd have a coffee before I was off shopping. I was out with my wife. And on the counter where you paid for the coffee, there was this sign. Now I'm going to hold it up the camera. Uh, I think you'll be able to see it if I do. Yes, you can. You can see it clearly, can't you? So you can see what it says there. It says, sexy people tip. And look at all the tips in the bottom of the bowl. Now, because I'm fascinated by marketing, then obviously, those aren't the three words, by the way. I will come back to three words in a moment. Obviously, because I'm interested in marketing, I asked the guy behind the counter, the barista, whether or not having that sign actually changed the amount of tips that they received. And did he do tests? And they said, yes, they did do tests. They tested saying, um, give us some money to buy football tickets to the match. Give us the money so we can uh, buy drinks for the girls. Uh, but the best one that they tested and found was this one, which was the sexy people tip. I mean, brilliantly clever, brilliantly simple, three simple words, which made a difference to the marketing. And that's what I want to talk about today is the difference that certain words can make to marketing. And here's some that we can use. I've, been, I've got lists of so many of these, but these are three absolute crackers. The first one, and this is one that I've made a mistake with over the years by assuming something. The first one is free. If something is free and we're able to use this most powerful of marketing words of free, it really can help us in our conversion rates. In the early days of using the word free, I thought, well, if I had something that was free and it was valuable, but given away free, then everybody would want it, wouldn't they? But of course, that's not true. Even when something's free, there's something that we need to do. We need to give it a value. So, for example, you probably use content marketing in the sense you send out checklists or free reports or you do webinars or training online that's free. But if we don't give the free item a value of some description, you don't give it a price, then it's not free. It's for nothing. Whereas if we've given a price to it, if we've given it a value and then we give it away free, then the word free works. So that's the first one we can use. We can use the word free. The second one we can use is the word you. Very often, and this is a common thing amongst copywriters, and I'm a copywriter as well, I love writing copy, and I love reading about writing copy, is there's a common expression which says this, which says, don't we all over your copy. In other words, you don't want to make the mistake that you see on so many websites that say, we do this, and we've been in business for this long, and we do, and we're, it's we everywhere. We don't be weeing on everything. We need to be youing on everything. So the word you, i.e. the reader, and remember that reader is a single entity. People aren't reading as a crowd. It's not like when we stand on stage and explain our ideas to a group of people where we can use plurals, you know, all of you, some of you in your minds, we can use language like that, but you can't use that in writing because it doesn't make sense. So you is a powerful word. So focus the message at that one person and talk to them. So rather than say we do this, say, you and I know, right? Use that word you as often as you can. In fact, a friend of mine who is a professional uh, public speaker and came second in the world speaking championships said that he'd been told by another coach that he got to go through and count the number of times he'd said I 
or we, compared to the number of times he'd said you. And if you can get that swinging, get that needle swinging right over to the you side, it makes the message far more acceptable. The third one, in fact, I've got a bonus one, which I'm going to come to at the end. Uh, I'll give you a fourth one today. But the, the third one is this word. And it seems strange, this, but it works very well indeed, is the word yes. Now, I don't know if you've come across the idea of what's called syntactic ambiguity. And syntactic ambiguity is when we use a word at the start of a second paragraph that would fit perfectly at the end of the first paragraph in front of it. So you might be asking a question that's a rhetorical question in your marketing, for example, and to make it very easy, uh, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Uh, that had a yes tag on it, didn't it? When and that's another yes tag, isn't it? And all of those, isn't it, doesn't it, wouldn't it, are yes tags. So I might ask a gentle question, that makes sense, doesn't it? And then at the start of the next sentence, I might use the word yes, because that yes, which fits at the start of the second sentence or second paragraph, is actually syntactically ambiguous because it could be the end of the preceding paragraph. In other words, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. And so that yes comes perfectly on there. You'll have seen this used uh, in another little expression which I use. This is one that I made up, which is prestivoxitation, which means actually slight of voice. So I have to uh, change that slightly, have to give it a qualification. So I call it integrity-based prestivoxitation in the sense of if you make the person who's reading the author of the piece, that's what I call integrity-based prestivoxitation. Prestivoxitation means slight of voice as opposed to slight of hand, which is prestidigitation. This isn't complicated at all, trust me, because you've been the recipient of this. You've been online, you've decided to buy something, you've got to the order page and the language now changes from first person speaking to second person to making you the first person by saying, yes, please rush me my copy of the latest blank, blank, blank and add the bonuses of so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. In other words, when you're reading that, you're reading it as though you wrote it. That slight of voice, very, very powerful, obviously done with integrity. So the word yes is really powerful. So we've got those three, three ones to start with. We've got free, we've got you, and we've got yes. Now let me give you the bonus one. The bonus one is hate. Very powerful word in marketing because obviously what we're talking about is emotional language. So we want to be saying something along that we don't want to be saying something on the lines of, well, that's not very nice. You want to be saying something like you'd hate for this to happen. You'd love, oh, there's another good one, by the way. There's five today. You'd love for this to happen. You'd hate for this to happen. So bringing that emotion with the choice of the words that we have, really, really powerful. So we've had five today, haven't we? We've had free, we've had you, we've had yes, we've had hate, and we've had love. I'm certain that you can take those away and sprinkle them beautifully into your marketing copy to make you more persuasive, more powerful, more passionate in the way that you communicate. If you've got any questions or comments on this, by all means, put them down there. You might have something to do with prestivoxidation, and I'll happily answer the questions for you. And in the meantime, I wish you every success in all your adventures in life as you continue to have freedom from anything that may have held you back and freedom to be, do, and have, always in that order, to be, do, and have whatever you set your heart and mind upon. My name is Peter Thompson. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos, then click to watch the next video. Remember to visit our website at peterthompson.com and download your free copy of my latest book, How to Write Your Business Book in Five Days or Less. Until next time, every success.